thank you for uh, thank you for joining me and everyone here and remembering that moment. We will now move into these, this press briefing, and um, I think you've all been given the order of ceremonies, but we'll talk through it. But firstly, I'm going to call up Professor Gamedi, who is the independent chairperson of the process. Professor Gamedi, oh, William. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, um, Nareen. Um, welcome, all of you. Yeah, I'm very grateful, actually, that, um, um, that uh, leaders invited me um, to be part of the process as the independent chairperson. Um, I'm not uh, a member of any pol of the political parties. I'm not formally aff affiliated to, to any of the political parties. So just want to make that, that clear. Um, we've got a, a you know one of the most exciting teams, the most capable teams that we managed to get together as a te technical advisory team, including Marie and Khan. We've got um, Linda Velikazi sitting um, 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 in the audience. So it really is. I, I don't think we could have found a better team. Um, to help guide um, the process. Now, often what many people have asked, um, I mean, because this is, this is a historical moment. This is one of the few processes in the world where a pack is put together, or, or rather an agreement, a coalition agreement is being negotiated before an, an election. Hasn't happened in many, many countries. It happened obviously in Brazil um, in, the, in you know, the early uh, 1990s, happened in Gambia um, about five or six years ago. Um, so this is an extraordinary historical moment. And I think firstly the maturity of the opposition party leaders to invite an outsi outsiders in. Um, it's, I think it's a newfound maturity. Um, and it's, it's a, I think it's, that is a critical moment um, for South Africa and it's also a critical moment um, for your position um, in South Africa because I mean the most important thing about uh, the quality of a democracy is essentially measured by the quality of the opposition. I mean it's a very, very critical issue. In immature democracies, again, um, many people ask me why would I be risking my reputation as an academic? <laughs> Uh, to be associated, <laughs> no, not to be associated, but to, um, to chair uh, um, the meeting. Now, in mature democracies, this is actually not, not unusual. Um, often, if you, you know, you, you may have read some of the big coalitions um, w um, in Western Europe, um, often um, when there's a deadlock after an election, they often bring in an outsider um, to help the facilitate facilitate the process. So it is um, obviously unusual in the South Africa context, but in a democracy, it is not unusual. So what it says about our democracy, we are beginning to mature, our democracy is beginning to mature. Um, very, very important. So let me talk to you really, and I'm going to stick to my to two minutes, I'm not, um, because I did ask that every leader year will talk for two minutes, and we get to a year. I just heard that's very optimistic to ask from a politician, <laughs> uh, but we came to try. Um, so really just, I'm, I'm going to set the scene for you, for you to understand, um, firstly what we're trying to do, I mean it's op the very obvious thing that we're trying to do, obviously as a team, and we've been involved for a couple of weeks now, is to try to, you know, to bring the parties together in an agreement, a, a core group in agreement, and as I said, it is extraordinary because normally these sort of things happens after elections, not before elections. So that in itself makes it, for me, very exciting. It's a very exciting process, not only for South Africa, but it really has been an exciting process um, in other developing countries that people are watching uh, what's happening and, uh, and will co-learn what we are doing. Um, so that really is the big, um, sort of a big, big picture. Um, coming closer to what we will be doing, um, really, we've had an outpouring of messages um, from civil society, individuals, business organisations. I mean, there are too many um, for me to mention them by name. So, what we'll do, um, you know, all, the, all of those messages of support, all positive, uh, will be compiled. I myself personally um, got over 100,000 messages of support, um, and not only support, but I can tell you ideas, a lot of the ideas I'm going to use here. <laughs> it's just ordinary people from, uh, 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 you know, just the ideas of, and 
showing examples where I should be looking and so on. So that's really an exciting process. I, I'm, I'm not aware of any of these kind of processes where that's been such public outpouring of support um, uh, and so on. So really, uh, so that's the first, you know, the second thing really, so the convention really is a convention not against anything, but it's a convention to build something. To build a, um, a coalition to generate hope and not against anything, but for something, for a better South Africa, for um, good governance, for capable delivery. So it's for, not against. So, and that's a very, very important, I think, narrative um, that um, me as a chairperson will try to get out um, um, and emphasize throughout um, the proceedings. Third thing is we'll try to get um, the parties to agree on a, a core minimum vision for South Africa. Obviously, in a negotiation, parties cannot, you know, there is give and take uh, compromises, but it's important to have a platform, a minimum platform, um, <coughs> and that that gets uh, agreed on. So it's a very core part um, of the negotiation. <coughs> Secondly, we're not going. We're not going to the moon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the group will have to come up with a name which is susceptible to all of the parties. So that's obviously I'm just going to throw it out there so you don't <coughs> ask uh, what's happening in this space. So that's going to be um, a conversation around that. Maybe you may have ideas. Um, maybe send the ideas um, to, to the party leaders. Send it on Twitter. Um, but that's going to be um, um, important. And then, um, Part ways, I mean, if this is the core group, what about other opposition parties? As part of my mandate as the independent chairperson is to engage with some of the other opposition parties that's not part of the core group that say values and so on. So that's <coughs> another conversation that will happen here, but will also ongoing conversation. So this is not the end, um, this is the beginning. And there'll be um, other conversations with other um, opposition uh, parties. And then um, the idea here is may not be possible actually if, um, in this room today or tomorrow, but to get a joint uh, position on the, in relation to the national dialogue on coalition governments. You know, it's a national dialogue going on. What would be the group's thinking? Uh, what would be the ideas um, uh, around that? Um, important, what would be the said governing principles of the coalition? Yeah? Um, I mean, you know many of the co coalitions that have failed at a local le level, often because parties didn't have a said governing set of principles, so it can be um, important. And then, to come to, an end, uh, to the end, what would be the common ground for solutions for South Africa going forward? And then I'm hoping at the end um, that we would have a public agreement um, that would be transparently shown to the public um, and that the parties will pledge to that agreement, and that pledge will hold them accountable. Because it's pointless of sitting for two days and prior to this convention and agreeing, and there's no accountability. So the public pledge really will be the accounting um, uh, mechanism. Thank you very much. Um, this is the beginning. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's just to recap, historic moment uh, for us in South Africa. 
Uh, the first time that a, co a coalition pact is being negotiated prior to an elect election is a historical uh, moment. It's a moment to reimagine South Africa, to reimagine, to retell our story, our narrative, in a much more positive, a positive way, in a much more hopeful way. And it's one of those, those opportunities. I mean, I wrote a prayer um, for the group, and, and at every negotiation session, um, I use, I recited a prayer, and maybe just one line in the prayer, which is quite important, uh, I think I'll refer to it, is in an individual's life, and in a country's life, there's often a moment of decision-making, which could alter your part. And often what one needs as an individual, and as a country, and as a political party, and as a leader, to take the courageous step, to rise above the past um, in order to move forward. And I think this is the moment, and this group has been blessed um, to make potentially a, you know, a couple of decisive decisions that may <coughs> alter uh, the tra trajectory of South Africa um, for the better. But it's going to be important that they rise as indiv individually and collectively, that they rise above sort of petty squabbles, uh, rise above egos, um, and that every decision they make, they have to think it, is, it has to be in the public interest of South Africa. It has to be for the future of all of us and for those still to be born. Thank you. Um, thank you very much to Professor Gamedi, who is the independent chairperson of this process, and thank you very much for that message of hope. I think it's important to everybody to understand we're looking forward to hope. To start, to start off this historic moment, each party leader is going to give a short input, and I will call them up um, and they'll give us their intentions for these multi-party negotiations and what they want from there. To start off is Mr. Christopher Klaassen, President of the Spectrum National Party. Mr. Klaassen, may I call you up? Thank you. Each leader has got a two-minute time. Okay. We're going to move some of the media things, if that's okay. Just shout if you need a sound check. Uh, good day, South Africa, party delegates, chairperson, facilitator in media, all glory to God. My name is Christopher Klaassen, the president of Spectrum National Party, a political party in South Africa that is an equal race governing policy. The SNP is represented in all nine provinces and we are celebrating our fourth anniversary on the 28th of November, 2023. We bow our heads in gratitude and declare our party's appreciation to be introduced as a participant in this multi-party compact or coalition that may secure a new political future and direction for South Africa. We consider today as a special moment in time, a moment that we may all look back on in the future as a turning point where the hope for building a better future for all South African citizens. A moment that will change the political future of the sovereign <coughs> country. Our parties indeed, it looks forward to finding common ground on sustainable solutions for challenges facing South, facing South Africa. The agenda for this convention is inclusive of all the most important matters that all the parties collectively agreed to discuss as the convention over the next two days. We pray that the parties currently on board agree to work in forming a united multi-party coalition after the 24 elections with the aim always being to offer South Africans an alternative, transparent and an accountable government prepared to be building a better future for all South Africans and to finally replace the generally corrupt governing party, the ANC. I thank you all and promise the cooperation of SNP and other party delegates at this convention. May God bless you. Christopher Glasson, the president of Spectrum National Party. 
thank you very much, Mr. Clarkson, for those helpful and insightful words. Um, the next person who will come and give their input is Mr. Neil De Beer, De Beer, President of the United Independent Movement. Mr. De Beer, can I call you up? Thank you. Thank you. Bayo kuya mora, molweni pashlali, namaste, salam. They say that when you're a man of grammar, a person that can string a multiple of words together, people seem to be impressed. I am no such man. I am a doer, but I can publicly say that I disclaim every other member here from my utterances in the next two days. <laughs> Today is deja vu. More than 30 years ago, I was here on this hallowed ground as a young member of the then Umkonto Wesizwe attending Kodesa Nomslaj. Not the same building, but the same land. We are here again, Uboyla Kaya Nomslaj Japanzat. We are here again to talk about freedom. We are not here to pick a fight or make any other party public enemy number one. We are here to make the public number one. Our diversity makes us a great nation. It is in this diversity we will find a union. One of my absolute heroes was a man called Anton Franz who fought in the Battle of Athlone, a young man, and while 50 people planned to kill him, he got up and he screamed, Kom haal mij, as jy kan. We are there again. Kom haal mij, as jy kan. Everyone should be screaming that today. No more than us. The UIM is a party of value. We find honor, dignity and just plain and simply compassion as part of our ethos and DNA. To me it's not about a small party and that is the rhetoric that gets thrown. Well let me tell you as members of the media, to me it is not about the size of the dog in the fight, <laughs> it is about the fight in the dog that matters to me. Yeah. Today we will bow our heads in God Almighty, inshallah, and we will come together as leaders of this country, not for us, but once and for all, for the people of this country. May God bless you. May God bless every one of you. I know some of you individually with respect, some of you for the first time, but when I look at you in your eyes, I see the color of your soul. I have a lot of hope. Challenges we will face today, separate opinions and agendas we will have. Elephants in rooms will be culled today. <laughs> Matters of rumor and pathetic judgment will be settled. I cannot commit that I will walk with you on this journey, but I will give it a damn good go until the end. Finally, to John, who started this, but to others who spoke about this. Thank you for letting us be here. Thank you for making us part of the journey. But as the UIM says, together we will. I thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. De Beer, for those profound words. Um, next up to give a message is Dr. Zukile Luyenga, President of ASANCO, the Independent South African National Civic Organization. Dr. Luyenga, may I ask you up? Uh, good morning, South Africa. Greetings to you, Program Director and the Chairperson of this arrangement and all leaders 
of political parties, uh, members of the media. Today is the day, and this is the only day where we are taking ourselves back to 1994. This is our 1994 as this pact. The Independent South African National Civic Organization seeks to say we have been let down by those whom we regarded to be the most credible and the most knowledgeable leaders. But here, we want to say we are capable collectively and individually to rise to the occasion. You are leaders, members of the pact. Don't underestimate your responsibility, your credibility, and ability to rise to that standard. South Africans have been looking for an alternative, and you are that alternative. Bring South Africa, take South Africa where it belongs, and that is to the skies. We are here, we have experienced a lot of challenges in a so-called democratic era, of which we are also going to read and learn about the failures and victims of such so-called democracy. Now we are here as drivers and conductors of a new arrangement, and that arrangement will be solicited and will be encouraged by a solidarity that will give progress and take South Africa forward. And through solidarity, we shall only progress when we take our political differences and uh, personal uh, feelings and put South Africans first, and that we can only aspire to be a developed country, although we are developing. But we want to make sure that we all participate as leaders with our communities in their own development. We are here to stay. We are here to say to South African, this is the real Codesa, and it will take us far and where South Africa belongs. I thank you. That was Dr. Zukuli Luenge from the, pre um, the president of ASANCO. Um, next to call up is Mr. Herman Mashaba, president of Action SA. Mr. Mashaba. Good morning, South Africa. Good morning, leaders of uh, the various political parties gathered with us uh, this morning. And thank you to the media present this morning. Fellow South Africans, uh, as we gather here right now, outside of this room, throughout our country, 44% of South Africans are unemployed today. 82 people are being murdered each day in our country. A woman is raped every 30 seconds. Continuous load shading cripples businesses and destroys livelihoods and jobs. And one million, million young people turn 18 each year with little or no hope. And as already indicated today, today where 34 minors were murdered at Marikana. It is in these realities that brings Action SA to this national convention. And this is what makes us put aside differences and work together with these political parties you see here. It is against this background that Action SA recognizes the historical moment of this convention. It is the first time political parties come together, put differences aside, and try to provide a viable alternative to a failed and uncaring government. NCS, all of us are aware, will lose its majority, and all South Africans know this. But they've never seen opposition parties putting aside differences to actually give them hope. Action SA commits ourselves to this national convention, and we have revealed how over 91% of South Africans want this project to succeed. That said, Action SA will de deliver some tough messages to those parties over the next two days. 
We need to attract more parties to build a broad church that can achieve a majority in the next general elections. That there can be no ambiguity about the removal of the ANC. We must define this agreement in a positive vision for South Africa, not against other political parties. And we must start building confidence by removing an actual ANC EFF government under which Johannesburg residents suffer today. How can we have an agreement of a national uh, happen when we ignore the residents of the city of Johannesburg who suffer today under the ANC EFF government? This is something that we need to confront and confront head on. I hereby commit Action SA to the stocks and to the project of building hope for a new vision for our people <clears throat> South Africa. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Herman Mishaba, President of Action SA, for your encouraging words. Next to talk is Dr. Peter Grunewald, leader of the Freedom Front Plus. Dr. Grunewald, can I invite you up? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues. It is not rare in any history of peoples and nations that at one or other stage, that nation is approaching a crossroad. There are many crossroads. In the history of South Africa, we had also many crossroads or as Professor Gumeri has referred to as historical moments. <clears throat> 1994 was one. As far as the Freedom Front Plus is concerned, our next crossroad or historical moment is 2024. It will not be the last one, uh, and it is also not the first one. But there's a responsibility on politicians, and I also want to say not only on politicians, but also on the electorate of that specific country. Therefore, I want to say that this initiative is an initiative of all the parties sitting here. We came together and we said that we must set an example. How are we going to ensure that we save South Africa? I don't think there's anyone in South Africa that will not agree that we are not at a good point in the history of our country. If you look at the decay, if you look at the crime situation, everybody says, but there must be change. Yes, and we must also understand, as I said, in a democracy, it's not only politicians, because there are many people that say, but you as politicians, you must solve the problems. Yes, we must. <clears throat> but we must also say a political party is only as strong as the supporters who vote for that specific party. And that's why I say that we must set the example as political party leaders to say that we will take hands. But we must also say to the electorate, you must strengthen the taking of those hands so that we can say South Africa. And the only way we can say South Africa is if we get rid of the ANC government. There's no other way. And we also know that the historical moment for South Africa is that for the first time, actually, because of the electoral system of proportionality, we get to a situation where we know that there's not one single opposition party on its own, we will be able to win an election next year. <clears throat> but because of the proportionality, every voter can vote for his or her party, make that party strong, and then know that that vote counts and strengthen all the parties so that we can take hands that as a coalition of opposition, we can become a coalition government. But we, and that's what we expect from these two days, is to say that we are a group of political parties here, 
and we must work towards a situation where we can say, firstly, that we trust each other, that we undertake that we will be loyal towards the coalition, and that we will ensure that we will do everything we can to unseat the ANC government. Therefore, my appeal is to the electorate, register and ensure that you vote in 2024. We will set that example, and I do believe we will, but we must also understand that we are still separate political parties. I always say in Afrikaans, the Freiheit Front Plus sal saam werk, maar ons sal nie saam smelt nie. You must always remember, you must make your party strong to ensure that after the election, because after the election, you will form a formal coalition, that you can bring those values of your party into that coalition. That is most important. But we must work hard. The Freedom Front Plus is willing to work hard and work together to ensure that we save South Africa. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gunnarold, um, leader of the Freedom Front Plus. Next person up is Mr. Via Flabisa, president of the Encarta Freedom Party. Can I invite you up? Thank you very much, Program Director. Greetings to Professor Kumete and his team, to all my fellow leaders present here today, to the support staff, sure. the members of the media, and the people of South Africa. Let me firstly pay my tribute to the mine workers who succumbed at Marikana on this day. May their souls rest in peace. Today we meet in this historic venue to press a reset button for our country. South Africa is on the verge of becoming a failed state. The IFP is here today in this national convention because we believe that there is still hope for our country and for the people of South Africa. However, if we want things in our country to change, we cannot continue to walk the same path that we have been walking. If we want to change, we will have to do things differently. This convention is about South Africa and its people. This is not an anti-ruling party club. Our reason for convening here is much more important. We do not hate ANC, but we hate what the ANC have done in South Africa. After years of struggle in 1994, the people of South Africa stood in long queues to cast their votes. I was one of them. We were full of hope that our country was entering a new phase of freedom and prosperity. Unfortunately, all our hopes are now lost. As the IFP, we are here to determine how best we could save South Africa together, how to bring about much needed change, and how to make sure that the issues that are important to our constituencies are on the negotiating table. These include crime, unemployment, poverty, inequality, load shading, and the ever widening gap between the rich and the poor. The good news is that there is already much that we are clear upon. However, as politicians, we cannot bring change alone. We need the support of all South Africans, including civil society. This is why I ask you, my fellow compatriots, please vote, stand up, and be counted. If you are unhappy about the way things are 
in South Africa. Do not stay silent. Register to vote, take a stand, and effect a change of government in 2024. I look forward to the next two days of deliberations. I am hopeful that we as leaders will engage in positive, constructive discussions that put the priorities of the people of South Africa first. Thank you very much, Program Director. Thank you very much. That was Mr. V. F. Shlabisa, President of the Encarta Freedom Party. And the next speaker to come is Mr. John Stiernhausen, Federal Leader of the Democratic Alliance. Mr. Stiernhausen. Thank you. Uh, good morning to the media and good morning to the fellow leaders here today. The next two days is not about politics or about politicians. The next two days are about the people of South Africa. And the outcomes of the next two days of discussions need to be judged based on whether they provide concrete solutions to improve the lives of South African people. If they speak to one of the unemployed South Africans in South Africa, if they speak to the mother who's sitting around a kitchen table wondering how to feed her family, to the business owners and people who've lost their jobs because of load shedding. For that to be the case, this cannot and must not be a purely anti-ANC project. It has to be a pro-South Africa project. And tomorrow when this process is, this part of the process is complete, please judge the politicians sitting at this table today on whether the outcomes promise greater hope and tangible improvements for your life and for your future. Ask whether they're collectively providing solutions to things like crime, unemployment, load shedding. If the answer is yes, if these parties emerge with an agreement to not only defeat the ANC, but to rescue South Africa, then I ask that you judge it as a success. Because our country does not have a second to waste. The next election in South Africa will be a hinge of history moment for our country. So now it is time for leaders gathered here today to put aside differences of the past, to forget about the scars of battles gone, and focus firmly on the future. The DA is irrevocably committed to this project. It is something I publicly committed our party to at our federal congress in April. To all my fellow leaders at the table, I want to say a very big thank you. Thank you for the maturity, for the compassion and love for country that has been shown and for how far we have already come. Many people thought that we would never even be able to get to this point, sitting around a table to find common solutions. Yet, here we are. But our biggest test now lies before us. Over the next two days, we will no doubt have honest and very robust discussions. But I know that they will be based on the passion we all share for this beautiful country and for all the people who call her home. The people gathered here at this front table represent a broad spectrum of the South African people. Seated before you are people from Durban, Mtata, Hamanskral, Stillfontein, Mtuba Tuba, and Cape Town. Proud South Africans, all of us. And this is the outcome we seek. What we're doing here over the next two days will be for the people of South Africa. An agreement for the people of not only Durban, Mtata, Hamanskral, or Stillfontein, or Mtuba Tuba and Cape Town, but for every town and city across our country. Judge the next two days on what the outcomes will be to the problems you face at home in your daily life. And I'll repeat what I've said before. This project cannot be owned by politicians. It must be owned by the people. If you're satisfied with the outcomes of our discussions, I ask that the people claim their ownership by going out to register to vote in massive numbers. There are 14 million South Africans who have not voted in the last two elections. There are 13 million South Africans who are not registered to vote. The moment for change has now arrived, and I pledge the DA's full support over the next two days and urge us all to seize this momentous opportunity with both hands. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Mr. John Stiernhausen, Federal Leader of the Democratic Alliance. 
You have now heard from all the party leaders, and I'm sure you've been all advised there will be no questions at this point, but there will be times and moments as we move through the multi-party convention. What remains is to say from me a good luck to everyone and to all the delegates, um, and we wish you well as we negotiate this multi-party national convention, and we hope it will be successful. Thank you very much.